almost black. Can everyone see? Yeah. Cool. So we have uh, file system, MySQL model, util model, uh, module for Promisify. We are trying to do something with like read file. Probably it's needed to, for reading uh, this yeah. JSON file with. Okay. Right, we have connection here. We have uh, promisified execution query, right? Uh, create database. Okay, uh, we use database. Actually, you could have specified a database here in the connection, so so you will you would need to execute this, yeah. right? Okay. If you want to create the first step, like. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we're gonna be looking at this further. Uh, it should be a separate file. Like, yeah, create database as a file. Stand uh, creation of database, it, should, it shouldn't be a concern of your file. The database already should, should be created, you know? But, all right, we have what we have, okay? So here we create a cities table, right? Not new and out increment or chart population in district like da, 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 da. Okay, primary key ID, fine. Uh, create countries table. Uh, we, we have ID, we have some data here and there. Whoa, it's it's a nice enum. Uh, surface area. Da, 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 da. What is GNP? It's uh, the gross national product by GDP. Okay. Fine. Uh, we establish a connection. Right. Then we create database, use database, create cities table, create countries table, and then we we read this file with data JSON, and we get cities and countries out of it, right? Okay. And then what, once we have cities and countries, we insert into city. Yeah, normally there was an insert into that. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like... Replace. Whoa! First time in my life I see such a work. thing. It's also just insert. <laughs> well, I mean, um, it's quite creative approach for the homework. <laughs> it's fine. I have to Google what does it mean, but I'm gonna do it later in the evening before sleep. Um, all right. <coughs> and here you execute uh, queries uh, against uh, against the database, right? Yeah. All right, uh, and probably I know what what happened here. So look, you have uh, in the first part of the script, you basically create a database, you create the structure tables, right, and you insert the data. In the second part of the script, you make select queries, right, and. Uh, 
every time you want to execute select queries you also have to execute all this like insert and create and stuff like that right uh, the, the same case everything in this in the script is correct and fine unless you should have separated so uh, one it should it should have been two different scripts right it uh, one part creates a structure and inserts data and you forget about it it's there you don't need to execute it anymore and then you create a second script with all the select statements. Mm -hmm. Understand why? Uh, because of every time you add new query here and there, every time you need you, you want to see the result, you actually have to like check the database if it's created. You have to uh, create tables. You have to insert data. But actually, you need to do it only once. And then execute as many queries as you want against this database. Mm -hmm. So if you split the script for two different scripts, you won't ever have this problem. All right? So you know what happened? Like, because uh, I think that was the problem with the code above. I submitted a merge request. So if actually scroll up, um, what happens in the for loop? I think when you're creating the table. Um, it's like a for loop with a yeah, oh, yeah just sorry, just sorry, yeah. Uh, scroll up. Um, so yeah, what happens here is like this asynchronous doesn't work. Um, it actually um, you can't call async inside it. So what here was there was like a way in the code. So what happens is actually executes to the end and then runs the rest before these things have finished executing. I think that's the mm. issue. Yeah. So uh, this needs to be changed to like countries dot map and then. Data for a collection of promises, you need like promises of all and you need to wait that. So you can't like the way the for loops and stuff work, like here it's actually not asynchronous. Like if you actually try that, if there's an error in this code, like inside this block, um, you won't console log here because it actually skips all this stuff, goes to the end of the script, script finishes and then gets to the second line. So uh, I created a merge request in the repo, like for lesson one, you can see it there, like how it's done. Um, it's a better way to solve it. So it's a really common gotcha. I actually got caught with that. So you can't just use a wait inside of the uh, JavaScript syntax issue. You said you wrote a repo? Yeah, if you look at the lesson one, I made a merge request. It's a waiting merge request in the lesson. So, um, like, so you need to use, like, because when there's an array, promise all, like, sort of waits for all the promises to finish, and then skips to the next one. So that's where you can use that. Yeah, it's a really common gotcha. Yeah, it's 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 it's quite a strong knowledge of JavaScript, huh? <laughs> no, I, I actually spend a lot of time trying to fix it about that. So. All right, all right. Well, thank you. I, I haven't spotted this uh, problem before. Mm. Cool, cool. Right, uh, is, it, is it any clear? So one... Unfortunately, I need to change the data. And also, I heard a question about how do we prevent insertion of uh, similar records to the database, right? How do we make them unique? Uh, for example, like uh, city name, it's not super unique. You can have uh, Harlem here in the Netherlands and uh, in the USA as well, right? If I'm not mistaken much. And a uh, few other cities like that. So you cannot make only one field unique and say, all right, we're not gonna have unique, uh, non-unique data anymore. Remember on the previous lesson, we spoke about uh, composite keys. Like when one field is not enough, right? You make uh, a key out of two fields. The same you do here. And you put unique constraint on this composite key of two fields. Country and city, country name and city name. This is quite unique, I, I believe. Uh, for making this index? Like, like 
I saw yesterday to do well, just what you said, like uh, the name and the country and population. I just want to be to, to make more ID. That's indivisible. This is where I start. I can't remember by heart this uh, syntax of this query, right? So I first I go to Google. I zoom in slightly. And I gonna open like first few links to just have a look what, what people do for that. How do I specify unique constraint for multiple counts in uh, MySQL? You can skip this part, you go straight to the green mark here, which is a proper answer, right? <laughs> and you alter table, you're gonna change your table, what, right? You're gonna put the, the name of the table here, add unique, uh, you put the name of the index, and then you specify the fields. So three columns. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be composite key of three columns, and it's gonna make sure that this combination of user, email, and address is unique. What happens if I try to insert a user Igor with email Igor at Gmail, but with uh, address of Hack Your Future? And then I try to insert Igor with this, the same username, the same email, but with different address. Will it be possible with this key? Why? Yeah. Yeah. No, vice versa. It yeah, will be yeah, unique. Yeah, it will be unique. unique yeah. So it's so considered. It yeah, my SQL thinks that, all right, seems to be fine then. Right? Mm, clear? This is how you do it. And uh, uh, I don't know, after the lesson, for example, tomorrow, you send me your query, you try to execute it. If it doesn't work, I'll get back to you on Slack, all right? Uh, have you seen what I've done? I just did the same, like I would have asked uh, someone about like, I can't remember how to do this key. I just opened Google and Googled it myself. It's, it's that simple, I mean. And then if this key, if this query doesn't work, you are totally legit to get to someone and say like, all right, I need this composite key, I tried to Google it, I understand how it works, but the query itself doesn't work, and here is my query, and it doesn't work, it returns this error. And someone will help you with that. Okay? And even more, errors of MySQL usually are Googleable. So you can put the, the error message to the Google, and Google will tell you, like, this is what you need to fix. Google-driven development. <laughs> Welcome. Um, yeah. So, again, what's wrong with this script? Come on. It's about, uh, I mean, from this perspective, uh, the JavaScript code. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. But apart from that? Uh, separate the functions. Yeah. You want to insert data only once. Yeah. Then you might want to modify this data, but it's a different story, it's a different query, it's a different thing. And uh, uh, then you want to make queries against this database. I'll, I'll make it like this. For example, for example, you have um, booking.com, right? Every time you go there and you search for, I don't know, for apartment in Spain, you uh, booking.com doesn't insert all the data for your query, so you could search it, because it's like a huge amount of data there. 
you, they execute only your query which is about selection because of database is already populated uh, with all the possible data and you just search for it you don't insert this data but here in the script we see that uh, we insert data and only then query it right it should have been split okay um anything else oh silence okay okay fine we'll start with our le uh, lesson uh do 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 right has anyone done preparation for this lesson like this reading a little bit yeah cool so who might tell me what's the difference between this uh not null statement and default statement remember something from previous le uh, lesson right yeah yeah how do you specify let's remember the previous lecture. uh how how do we specify column we specify column name right and data type goes then what else do we put there? We also uh, let's 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 open this. Uh, oh, 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 nope. This one. Uh, do 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 do. Classy, right? Previous time happens the same, probably. Uh, oh, show tables. And uh, how do we know the structure of the table? Cool. Let me zoom it a little bit. So, what do we see here? Uh, null and default null. Do you still remember what it means? Explain. Let's talk about the first column first. It don't state uh, anything about the null. Mm -hmm. uh, it take the default. Uh, as a null. Yes, as a null. Uh, because mm -hmm. we already uh, waited null for the default yeah. values. Uh, but if we say not null, uh, if we say okay, uh, I will start with the not null, like nothing or empty. Um, so basically, this uh, this thing says we allowed to insert null, right? Yeah. In this column. Cool. Don't specify. Hmm? It means not specify as a. No means not specified, not added, there's no value. Yeah. yeah. And default means uh, uh, what's the default value of this uh, uh, If you don't send any information, uh, it will take no because of default is no. Yeah. But if uh, we say no, no, uh, We have to send something because of the fault uh, is null, but we are saying okay, we cannot take the null uh, value. Uh huh. And, uh, and so maybe we will get there. If we have here no, yeah. 
in uh, in this null column, it will not accept null value yeah. there, right? It will throw an error. MySQL, right? Yes. yes. All right. Is it clear so far? Right. But uh, what is this thing default? When we when we specify a value of this column, it's gonna be there, right? But if we don't specify value, it's gonna pick the default value of this column, which we have specified, right? Mm, but does it mean that new value cannot be inserted? For example, if I want to... In, let's go to our database and... Uh, All right, um, for example, I don't want to specify date of birth for new student who I'm going to add. Can I put null here? So far I can, I guess, right? But what if I specify default and I don't know? Two thousand zero one zero one. Will I be able to insert null value to date of birth if I have default already specified something? Um, and if default uh, value, what is specified? Can we specify only default value? Can create new default? Uh, yeah. But if I want to specify just null there, I don't want to like put default date and I don't want to put real date of birth there. Can I put null there? If I have default value for this column. If it's, uh, if it's assigned like there's default value for this, no you can't. Because default will take uh, string placeholder like text. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the trick is, I can. Yeah. <laughs> I I can because of uh, basically this column. It says I can insert null or I can not. Default. Um, to do do. How how do I explain this? Um, all right. Uh, let's try this. Um, How do I finish the query if I want to insert something? <coughs> values right here. Values and then what goes? Just, 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 value, just value. Student number because of I don't have it auto increment, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be zero, 03. We're gonna do auto increment ourselves. It's gonna be, I don't know, your, I'm not gonna tell my real date of birth, right? <laughs> I'm gonna tell everyone it's new. Deal with it. Uh, do we have to write the big or like string? Uh, when, it's, um, when it's only one word, it's fine. But when it's uh, eager B, for example, it won't be parsed properly, so you need uh, quotes, right? But always put everything in quotes, right? Because I'm being lazy right now. Don't don't look at me. And uh, no, all right, and great. I, I'm not very good at learning, uh, and I'm male. Huh? Ah, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, I maybe I have to, I'm going, all right, let's make it string, see, it doesn't, uh, you always have to put this uh, quotes, oh man, also, 
Uh, the thing is, well, well, while I was preparing for the lesson, I created a trigger so name cannot be a shorter shorter than fifty letters. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and this is my error, which I created myself. Ah, uh, too bad, too bad of me. Now I have to create names of uh, fifty letters, or I have to Google how to remove trigger. Uh, Huh? Just follow the rules. No, no, it's uh, it's annoying. <coughs> so, oh, drop trigger class, yeah. And uh, I have created it something like here. I'm gonna drop it. Wondering if it if it's gonna work or not. Hey, let's try to insert it again. Hey, nice. From students, and I have my date of birth as null, right? Uh, then let's change uh, the definition of the table, so we are not allowed to have no here i want to see no here right let's google it again See, basically everything here in this lesson is Googleable. This is what you can do yourself at home when you stuck with something like MySQL, like I don't want to make it, I don't want it to be knowable. You just go to Google and Google it yourself. I do it all the time. I'm being paid for that. You have to find simple solution. Huh? You have to find simple solution because you may lost in the step overflow. Uh, yeah, this is right, but uh, with some experience it comes. <laughs> okay, where is this? Uh... So, here we go. Alter table. Uh, Change uh, change date of birth birth <coughs> not all right uh will it will it be successful this query? Hmm. I think there is a conflict. Hmm? There is a conflict. With what? With default value. Uh, good guess, but no. 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 Huh? Yeah. No. Cool. Oh, yeah, it's not even correct syntax, huh? Oh yeah? yeah. Oh, true, 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 true. All right, here we go. Invalid use of null value. It's because of here in this column we already have null, right? It does. It's it checks all the records in the database because before executing this query and it says like 
you cannot make it null because you already have nulls in your database first you have to solve this problem uh, cool let's solve this problem uh, how do I do that <laughs> if I had to make a guess first, maybe we can set a default value for that column. Yeah. And then we can uh, change the null ones with the default one. And then maybe we can alter it. Uh, can yeah, it's correct that we have to change existing row, right? But it's not correct about default value because default value will be will take an action only when we're gonna insert new rows. Mm -hmm. So it that it will not affect existing rows. So so all right, we, we we must have a serious talk, all right? Now we have uh, two types of queries here in MySQL. Uh, Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. First type is DQL. Okay. Oh no, it's too much, too much. Which means uh, data query language. It means insert, update, uh, delete, um, select. select also, yeah. Uh, all this kind of uh, queries which operates with your data it retrieve it, uh, they retrieve it they um, update it like delete obviously right do all this kind of things with records with records with data itself and second type of queries is DSL data structure language uh, it manipulates with with the data uh, oh, with the structure of data. So data and structure, right? So basically, uh, create table is DSL. It's structure related. When we describe a field and when we do alter table and insert, uh, add one more field or change the structure or something like that, it's DSL. You must probably gonna work with DQL because you gonna insert new records, retrieve some records, and the structure will be already there. Uh, the reason I'm talking about this um, because of you don't often do DSL like you don't often change the structure. Uh, you uh, the problem with this script right uh, from the homework. You mix two things. You missed structure and data. You you should have it separated. And here we go again. Uh, alter is DSL. It's uh, structure related, right? And update, both of them do more or less the same. They just change something in a way, right? But alter changes the table and the structure and update changes the, the data itself, what's inside the structure, right? It's, um, it's quite different and you want to understand it because of what's the difference between drop and delete? Just delete a record from a structure or table. Come again. Uh, drop uh, deletes a structure. Uh, uh, I, uh, drop deletes the structure, right? Whole table yeah. or a column for, yeah. from this table, right? Mm -hmm. Delete just deletes a record for a structure. Yeah. So, so criteria. Hmm? You, we have to specify criteria with delete. Ah, you also can say delete uh, everything from that table and it's going to delete every every record from that table. But not the table. But not the table. So you want to have in mind what are you operating with right now. Is it like structure or is it data? Alright? Uh, so uh, 
now we are looking at a student's table, right? And we have someone called Igor and it, it, he's does, he doesn't have date of birth. What, what kind of query uh, we're going to use? Is it structure-oriented or data-oriented? Yeah. Uh, and probably it's going to be alter. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, for date uh, how do I oh yeah yeah nice uh, how do I proceed further I want to update students table hmm Oh, let's make it a string, right? We already saw it. <laughs> oh, it's a it's a dangerous statement, huh? <laughs> so look, look what's gonna happen. Uh, it's gonna put uh, exactly this date of birth for all the users in this table who hasn't specified um, the date of birth. Because so far I'm only one small unique snowflake here with, without date of birth, right? But imagine there are like few more guys who decided to not specify it. Where student number equal to hundred uh, thousand three and uh, date of birth equal to. Nine. I think uh, just uh, student number is unique enough, huh? Right, because of like one thousand and three and like and no, all right, we can then, yeah, we can do that, but it's simpler just to rely on ID, right? Thing, you have a typo and you don't want to update another user. So that's it. Yes. I want the beer. I want the <laughs> You are getting two. Where student number equals one thousand and three. Do I need quotes here? No. I don't think so, right? Oh, I'm so bad at typing here today. Huh? So, uh, interesting thing. Uh, how do we specify date of birth here? Do we do it like this? Because uh, null is like uh, a data type here in MySQL. Or we can specify it like this. Uh, I think no. Or we specify it as empty. Because this is not a value. <laughs> no. Uh, so here we go. Um, it's yeah. It's uh, not very obvious, and it's something you probably won't guess without knowing it. But it works like that. Why does it work like that? Uh, let me open um, a nice article from um, from my homework. Oh, from your homework. Working with nulls. It's uh, quite a spectacular thing. So. Uh, 
MySQL considers nu as no value, right? And we could have done this query right here with equals uh, double quotes because of because of let's check it um, what's happening here we make select statement but we don't select anything from any table select in this uh, in this case it's basically like um, select is in concept of mysql or any relational database is basically just retrieving uh, something like a calculating something right and right now select gonna calculate us the result of expression is this empty thing empty string in our case is null and null in terms of mysql means no value like does this empty string looks like no value we are basically asking mysql and like results can be very different and what can we see here is it considered null? No. no. MySQL doesn't consider it as a null. So it's complicated and uh, you want to be careful with this sort of statement is null, is empty string, is zero, because this, uh, this kind of values well, you just have to look at this uh, at this thing uh, article. Go there, investigate it, and like, and if I would be you, I would go and check this article every time I do this uh, statements is null or not null or stuff like that, because it's complicated and you don't want to remember it all the time. It's not something like crucial for your work, but you still want to consider it like when you do some changes, all right? Okay, um, so where were we? Uh, yeah, let's check if uh, if it's been updated. Yeah, now I have uh, now I have my date of birth, and now we might update default values. Where is this? Now, can we run this query? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, now I think it's gonna work, right? Because we don't have uh, no values anymore in our table. Seems like it worked. Uh, but how do we make it sure? Cool. Hey, every column can be null, but not date of birth. So what? What's going to happen if we try to insert uh, someone with uh, empty date of birth now? Like, you cannot insert this because of this value can't be null, right? Uh, let's check it. Where do we have this insert statement? Um, who wants to be inserted? Otherwise, I'll insert on mesh. You can insert my name. Hmm? Um, I insert my name. Ezra? Yeah, there's nothing else. And you're gonna be female, you're gonna have good grades, much better than I do. And you're gonna be 1004. Let's try it. Um, 
Hey, cool. Uh, all right, let's try to specify something default, right? And if default, uh, what's the word? Uh, if the same uh, uh, criteria like dead verb, it's not known, should be not known, and the default value should be known. Uh, you want the default value. Come again. Uh, I don't get it. Can we try this? Uh, set the default, default value for date of birth. Yes. All right. And uh, we're going to try th this query again, right? Yeah. And uh, the default date of birth going to be picked up. This is our, like, theory, right? We're going to prove it or not prove it. I mean... Set the default value with the, not necessarily with the verb, but any uh, other uh, follow with the, uh, the norm is yes. Uh, let's try it for uh, this column because it has not null, right? Yeah. And let's try for another column which has null yes, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, what kind of query we're gonna execute? Like, uh, where do we start? Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. But, uh, data is not needed. The second one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And um, date and default How do I do this? I don't know. Just write the code. Oh, yeah. uh, this field type is date. You cannot put their string. It's supposed to be date. 1980 Start of Unix epoch, right? Uh, right, that's it. You think so? Yes. Ah, typo, typo, typo happened. And it also would. Okay. Hey, it worked. You know uh, the reason why we specify it twice? Because while when we are changing something under the hood MySQL does something like that it creates new table, uh, new column with slightly different name then puts the values of the old uh, from the old column there and then just switches the pointer so that's why we uh, uh, first thing we are saying like we are copying the value from here to there. If I'm not mistaken much, but this is how it, this is how it works if, if I remember it correctly. This is the reason why we want to specify it. So uh, let's check uh, if it happened. Huh? Describe students. We have. Right, see what happened, eh? You should specify not He overrides the null with the default value. Am I right? Um, when we specify default value, we should specify not null. 
it also have to specify not null. Bam! Here we are. And let's try to insert Ezra again. Why is it happening like this? Why doesn't it pick up uh, the value? Because it's only the fourth value. Hmm? No, we said already. Uh, no, not no. But we are trying to now uh, put no. Yeah. Says okay. But what? Why doesn't it pick up uh, the default value instead of no? But we are we are specifying something. If we don't write anything. It will take the Good one. All right. Uh, how do we uh, how do we insert default value here? Uh, just uh, writing default. Yeah. A it worked. All right, I'm gonna run. But uh, what do we want to see now? Do we want to see the structure or do we want to see the data? So, do we do describe or select? Select or select. What's the difference between select and describe? Select will show the data. Yeah. Describe will show the structure. So it's DQL and DSL, right? Yeah. Quite similar, but also very different, huh? Yeah. Hey, we have Ezra with quite a. Uh, Start of uni Unix epoch, right? But still good grades. Good grades. You you cannot beat that. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, do you know the other way to insert a default value uh, without specifying default? We can specify the column names. Uh-huh. And we can give the values in sequential manner. A uh, sequence doesn't matter much, but uh, you can specify uh, values. Uh, student number equals mm -hmm, uh, student name equals. Mm -hmm. You omit date of birth. You don't specify it at all. Yeah. You don't put null there. You don't. You just don't mention this field, and then it will be picked up from defaults. Mm -hmm. When you don't uh, specify the red first, you need to keep some place uh, uh, on the square, it's like comma, empty space, then comma, so... Uh, so uh, this or? syntax will not work for you. Okay. Uh, here, you either have to specify default okay. or real value, you know, okay. which you want to insert. If if you don't want to specify default, you specify uh, you specify values with fields. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. You don't write anything between the two columns. No, 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 no. Look, 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 look at this. Between Um. Huh? Brackets and backticks, column names and backticks, and then values. Column names and uh, Like uh, in backticks? Yeah, yeah let, let's don't do that. <laughs> Student number. Number. Just a column name, and then after that, values. All right, you know what? I Google it. MySQL insert, right? 
You see, people, everything is perfectly Googleable. You don't have to remember much things. So you do it like this: insert into table name da 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 and values da da da. This is exactly what we're gonna do: insert into students, student number, student name. I don't specify date of birth here. Then grade goes straight and uh, gender. Whoa. Nope. Values. And the values go in the, in the same like uh, in the same order like we specified fields. Uh, student name. Uh, grade seven again because it's still me, right? You see, now what will happen? What will what will we have instead of date of birth? And will this query succeed? Yeah, yeah. Default. With default value, right? Let's try it. Oh, look. Yes, and we have default value. Yeah. Because of, uh, if you see the difference, uh, here we explicitly specified <coughs> that we want null for this column. And it, it, it didn't work because of we are not allowed to put nulls there. Uh, Let's do some thinking. Uh, in what case this syntax wouldn't uh, wouldn't succeed? Case? Yeah. Uh, many cases. Yeah, there are too many cases. I just have to talk about that. All right. Uh, look, it wouldn't work if we had default value null. Uh, we have all the fields specified here, right? Uh, except date of birth. And for date of birth, it would go to default value. And the, if default value is null, it would try to insert null to this uh, field, and to this column, and null is not allowed. Yeah. And at the end, it will draw an error that null is not allowed. Whoa, intense. Right. Uh, I can understand something. Usually it's a good idea to use the column names because it, the structure that the table changes the order as well. And uh, when writing as well, if you split it into two rules and if you align the column name on top and with the value on top, so you don't get any stuff, so it's practically the same. Yeah, it's, it's safer, right? I'll grab one more energy drink, sorry. I can then need it. All right, we spoke about nulls a little bit, right? And now we're gonna talk about foreign keys. Do you still remember about uh, relationships? Yeah, relationship between like tables, between and you can also call call it entity, right? Yeah. If we are talking about like some things which are related, everything is called entity sometimes. How many types of relationship we have? Three. Which are they? What about many to one? One. Just one, one to many? One to many and So it doesn't work much. It's only three of them. Yeah. Not four. Cool. <laughs> um, all right. Um, 
on the previous lesson we uh, we spoke about uh, just having these relations, right? But my uh, MySQL is a relational database, which means that it's gonna help us to maintain these relations between tables. Um, MySQL has this relationship of uh, has this mechanism of foreign keys. Uh, all right, we, we're gonna need an example. Um, oh, here it was. So, uh, I'm gonna create a table uh, for two tables for departments and employees every employee would belong to a department and every department will have employees what kind of relation is it is this one of what yeah and many employees belong to one department, right? Uh, so, does everyone see that? Yeah. Is a uh, bright background better than dark one, or I should switch to the dark one? It's okay. It's all right. Okay, I gonna go. don't need updates. It's fine. So what do we have here? We have a uh, department, right? Uh, we have department ID, because every entity gonna need ID. Why medium end? Why is this? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, it's like medium range integer. It's like it's slightly smaller than uh, than regular integer. I I can't remember the the amount of bits. It's just smaller than regular integer, right? Just size, right? Hmm? Just size. Yeah. Uh, why why don't I put int there? Because we cannot have like super large amount of departments, right? Mm -hmm. Even like big companies like Philips or I don't know, Apple or something like that, they have very limited amount of departments. So I decided to save some. Uh, why do I have not null here? Yeah, also auto increment here. Yeah, because. When we create an entity, we want to make sure we can refer to it, right? And we want to have an ID. And this ID shouldn't be null, because how, how would we refer to the record? Uh, so uh, we have department name and department uh, head, like who's the main, uh, who's the person, who's the main person in this department? I remember it. So uh, previous time I, I was wrong. No, it's not uh, 254. It's 255, because of uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. It happens. Come on. Uh, so 256 is the barrier, and one less is 255. And like in the must of uh, MySQL manuals, you're gonna see 255. Don't get confused, sorry, and I'm fixing it right now, right? It's gonna be 255. All right, and uh, here I have a cons uh, primary key, I have to make it ID, uh, depth ID, right? 
That's how MySQL knows that this is a primary key of our entity. Uh, let's do this, right? Uh, I will execute it with uh, terminal. Come on, go away. No? All right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Also, I put here, you see, like some sort of command side. Uh, commands. Uh, this is how you make commands in MySQL. You just put dash dash and it's omitted till the end of the line. You can put like whatever you want. You can put banana there and it will, it will not do anything. Uh, so the basic, basic structure for all the tables is, is like that. You have ID, then you have some useful fields like name and uh, head and stuff like that. And then you have uh, primary keys, foreign keys and all this kind of stuff. So these three sections, all right? That's what we do here. Uh, da, 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 near I depth ID. What is that like? Uh, you need the comma. Oh yeah, that's right. Something goes wrong today with typing. Ooh. All right. Uh, how? Uh, how do I know if the table is created? Yeah, but if it's not created, it's gonna throw an error. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's there. Uh, if you pay attention, um, even here, even though it's one school, but different lessons and different lessons created apparently by different people, right? And examples, uh, in examples from the previous class, we have from small letter it starts and has S at the end, right? Uh, examples for the second lesson start with big D. And don't, don't have S at the end, it's not plural. Keep it consistent, all right? Just when you get to your, to your job, just have a look around and like make sure you don't create this kind of things anymore. But if you use one too many and one department you have? Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I'll, I'll explain it like this. We have a table, right? And... Uh, table of departments and you can have many departments there so you you are totally allowed to call the table departments but also it's entity of department it's a structure of department so you every department inside is belong belongs to department so you are also can call it just department without s so Look at the rest of the database and just figure it out how people call it in your company and just do the same. Okay. Right. Uh, so, look, here we, we have not null, right? Just like we specified. Uh, this is a primary key. And we have auto increment. It's quite cool. It works, right? Uh, then we have uh, employee table. Departments need uh, someone to work. So we have uh, ID, we have uh, name of employee, we have some salary, and also we have department ID here in the table of employees. Why do we have it here? see that the employee in which department that employee belongs to. 
Yeah. Show the relation you create the create the relation between employee and the partner. Yeah, that's right. This is how relation one to many uh, happens, right? Uh, on the many side, you just specify uh, ID of one side, so it can refer back, right? This is actually called a foreign key, this department, department ID, because it doesn't belong to employee, but this is just a reference to some to other relation, yes. right? Uh, then we have a uh, primary key here, ID, which is about employee, because we have ID here. And we have this construction here, foreign key. Uh, and foreign key, you specify the field here in this entity, which is department ID, and it references to entity of department and looks at department ID there at the table of department. Make sense? Yeah, I think so. Uh, why do we, why would we want to have such a construction here? Why can't we just make um, some extra queries for selection by ID. What does it do? MySQL supposed to help you somehow with manipulation uh, of data and like um, it's supposed to help you with uh, maintaining this data structure of one to many, right? This is what MySQL would do for you. But what exactly would it do? Uh, let, let's have a look. So imagine we have this uh, department and M. Ideas. and uh, we have a uh, department like dev development right department and we have like one employee here second third and all of them belong to one dev department oh no 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 all of them belong here uh, what happens if department is deleted? Someone comes to the database and just press the button delete department. Then all these employees have no department anymore, right? And they still have department ID of, I don't know, let's say 99. which points to non-existing department. This is called data inconsistency, and this is what we want to avoid. If you had a look at uh, the articles in order to prepare to the lesson, uh, maybe you know what is ACID principles, what are ACID principles, right? Uh, second principles stay as uh, consistency, data consistency, and uh, MySQL also, uh, helps you to maintain it. So, what uh, if you properly set up this relation with these foreign <coughs> keys like we just ha have seen? You also specify uh, uh, something like Cascade delete. So once this guy is deleted, all these things will be deleted as well. All the employees will be deleted. Um, 
There are many more constraints like this. Our lesson doesn't cover it. Um, but it's a, it's a big thing. Uh, and uh, Shall I spend some time explaining cascade update and stuff like that? I don't know. It, it doesn't happen often in real life. But what you want to know so far, why we have uh, these foreign keys? In some cases, uh, uh, foreign key might might say you you cannot delete department until you you reassign these IDs to some other department, and then MySQL will allow you to delete this department only when no employee belongs to this department. It actually makes sense. You have to put your employees to some other departments before you close the department, right? But employees must be belong to departments, right? Yeah. That's important. Mm -hmm. important. Yeah, they're supposed to work for something, right? Yes. Um, so basically, uh, two main constraints. You can disable deleting it un until you have anyone uh, belonging to the department or you can just delete all the employees. Uh, imagine this. Uh, we, we set this cascade delete and uh, we remove the department, right? All the employees being removed from the table. We don't have employees information anymore. We don't know who was born, where, uh, what date of birth, we don't know um, salaries, we don't know the gender. But employees, they don't disappear, right? They just stop belonging to the to that department, but still they are there. How do we fix this situation? Add the foreign key, another foreign key. And what is it going to do? To maybe the uh, that company uh, ID or something. Yeah, that will give them, protect them from any further sort of changes, like give them extra layer of uh, like identification. Extra layer is a proper idea. But let's think about implementation. How would we implement this? Excuse me, but in five minutes there's gonna be a presentation. Oh, 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 sure. Forget about, forget about that. Uh, we'll continue later.